Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're going to be solving a Physics 7a practice problem on the topic of microscopic uh, bond energy. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. That really helps our channel. So this is the problem that we're going to be working on today. So UC Davis uh, scientists continue to conduct experiments on a gym and cyclarium. The plot on the right shows pairwise potential energies for AI, AI, and psi, psi atoms. Note um, R0 is 1.12 sigmas, and H tick mark on the y axis is an increment of 0 0.04 units. The diameter of psi is twice the diameter of AI. Determine the diameter of both from the given plot, label the two curves, explain your answer. And then we have uh, we have a pair of atoms is oscillating with an e total of negative 0.6 times 12, 10 to the 21 joules, and we have to figure out whether it's a guineum or a cyclarium, and then plot the corresponding e total and kinetic energy. Br briefly explain your answer. Um, okay, so let's just go ahead and do uh, the uh, first two questions. As you can see, I have my uh, problem over here. I have both of the graphs. Uh, one of them is the aginium aginium, and then one of them is um, cyclarian cyclarian. So let's just go ahead and figure out who is who. Let's see. So the di diameter of a psi is twice the, the, the diameter of aginium. Uh, so twice. That means that uh, psi is greater. So this, um, this one must here. Uh, this one must be the psi, psi, and then this one must be the i, uh, i, like this. How do I know? Well, the diameter of the atoms is where uh, they cross the x-axis. So this one crosses as at 1, uh, so 1 angstrom. This one crosses at 2, so that must mean that uh, this one is greater right here so that was pretty easy to figure out so now let's just figure out the second part which says that a pair of atoms is oscillating at negative 0 0.6 so that would be this line over here uh, determine which pair and plot e total and kinetic energy Okay, determining which pair is it is kind of easy because um, it can't be the cyclarium because the cyclarium only touches 0 0.6 on one spot. So if it were the cyclarium, uh, both of them would be at rest instead of oscillating. Whereas the aginium, we have it on this range, which means that basically it is the aginium because the aginium is oscillating over here like this. It's oscillating between these two values. So it is definitely the aginium, aginium because uh, the cyclarium would be at rest, not oscillating over here. Okay, so now, oh, we also have to uh, plot E total and kinetic energy. Okay, so E total I've already plotted. So total is just this line over here. Uh, so this dashed line would be E total. Then this is potential energy. So that's the one that we had. So now we only have to do um, the uh, kinetic energy. So kinetic energy we figure out by remembering that E total is equal to potential plus kinetic. So they have to add up to zero point, uh, negative 0 0.6 at every point. Okay, so at these two points Potential and kinetic, uh, potential and total, I'm sorry, are exactly equal to each other. 
which means that kinetic is zero at these two points. Okay, so now what's next? Now we have to make sure that it adds up to negative 0 0.6, which means that, for example, here at negative 1, at negative 1, negative 0 0.6, this has to be equal to 0 0.4 positive, so it's going to cap up over here at 0 0.4, and then we can just copy just making sure, there we go, to imitate this curve because again, they have to add up to 0 0.6. On a quiz, I would just make sure to clearly label this point, this point, um, this point over here and this one. So these three, and then just kind of copy the shape. Uh, those are for the most important points. And then we just label this as kinetic energy for part B. Now, are these bounded or unbounded? Well, this is not um, this is not something that the quiz is asking you. But uh, first of all, these ones are bounding because they are oscillating, so that means bounded. But we can also tell because the kinetic energy is bounded by two points instead of just going all the way to infinity. So these two are definitely unbounded. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and do part uh, three and four, which I'm just going to put on the screen real fast. So for parts three and four, we have to calculate E1 for the configuration, for a side-side configuration and, and a guinean pair configuration. So let's just go ahead and do it using our equations. It's just pretty easy. So let's just do number three first. So we have R0 here. For this configuration, how many pairs do we have? We have three nearest neighbor bonds. Should be this one, this one, and this one, like this. And so this is three nearest neighbor bonds. And now we have to, how much energy do we have per bond? So this is psi, psi. So that would be uh, negative 0 0.6. So the energy for the nearest neighbor is 0 0.6 times 10 uh, to the what? Negative 21 joules, like this. So E bond is three bonds times the energy of each bond. So E bond for this configuration is equal to uh, 1.8 negative, I'm sorry, negative times 10 to the negative uh, 21 Joule's final answer. Now, why am I only considering nearest neighbors? Because we don't really have second nearest neighbors. It's just three atoms. So that's basically it. And then the negative sign, it, I just forgot that the equation has a negative sign. So oh, that was just uh, a simple mistake though. That wasn't really theoretical, I just forgot. All right, so now for number four, we have to calculate E bond for this aginium configuration. So now we're doing aginium, we're working with this graph. And also something interesting is that we do have two nearest neighbors, but we also have one second nearest neighbor. So we have two nearest neighbor bonds, one, uh, one second nearest neighbor bond like this so our e bond is two times epsilon because it's two nearest neighbors and the nearest neighbor is just this point over here uh, plus the contribution from the second nearest neighbor which is one because it's just one bond 
times and then the energy for the second nearest neighbor in this case is just twice are not so twice um where is it twice 1.12 that would be 2.2 uh, yeah 2.24 so if i look at 2.24 on my graph i'm gonna have to go ahead and look at the original graph which I encourage you to click on the link in the description for this YouTube video if you want to actually zoom in because I'm going to have to actually zoom in. So 2.2 here is more or less one tick mark on the original PDF. So this would be 0. Point zero four negative. Like this. Again, I always post the original PDF because I know that my graphs, you know, they're very helpful to have here, but they're not exactly perfect. So go ahead and look at the graph yourself. That's a very important skill to have. And then this epsilon, by looking at the graph, is um, just one. So it's just one times 10 to the negative 21. And this is also times 10 to the negative 21. So if I put this on a calculator, let's see. So, oh, I don't need to. This is just uh, 2 plus 0.4. So this is 2.04 times 10 to the negative 21 joules. Final answer. Most important part here is, first of all, identify how many nearest neighbors do you have and also identify whether you have second nearest neighbors. In this case, for problem number three, we didn't. For this one, we did have one second nearest neighbor. Then identify the values for epsilon and also the radius. The radius we were given here in the instructions, so that was easy enough. Um, and then we just had to identify what's double that, find it on the graph to use that in our answer. And that will basically be final answer for this practice problem. If you have any questions, let me know on the comments. I'll, I'll do my very best to like get to them. And if you found this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. As I said, it really helps our channel. I'll see you guys on the uh, next video.